Are Age of Sigma models actually better than 40k? Pretty much my worst nightmare. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's a good to way paint. to start. I almost gave up when I was painting that. They're very pigeonholed these days with the law. Trying to please everybody is just such an impossible victory. But you don't see that as much in the iOS community. But it I seems like everyone's much more chilled about I think it. It's because it's new. This podcast is brought to you by us. If you're a fan of the show and you want to support us, then you should know that we have dropped some really cool merch on the Siege Studios shop. We've got several shirt designs with this really cool graphic on it. I've been wearing mine all of the time for months now, and I genuinely get compliments constantly from people who have absolutely no idea what Warhammer is. The shirts are really nice, high quality cotton, and everything is in stock and dispatched by us. None of that print to order nonsense. So if you want to check out the designs for yourself and see the other merch that we have on the shop, head to the link in this episode's description or go to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. And if you use the code POD10 at checkout, you'll save 10% and you'll get a free sticker pack with your order. Hello everyone and welcome to Paint Perspective episode 67. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking about Age of Sigma models and are they better than 40k? This and more later in Paint Perspective. But first, uh, James, how are the exemplars of Siege going? Good, yeah, good. Uh, I exemplary, exemplary. Yes, that's yeah. right. Ah, yeah, word of the day, everybody. Here you we go. It's brilliant. Uh, no, they're good. I have been strengthening the ranks a little bit because uh, I've made loads of characters, uh, and I've, I wanted what I wanted to do is um, I when I first started, I wrote out a bit of law, and then I wrote all the individual captains with different companies. I wrote like the master of the forge, chief apothecarian, like uh, the high chaplain, all those different ranks because I wanted because I always think that a chapter is kind of like is it the main thing that you know about Space Marine chapters is like the characters or the mm. captains and things like that. So I wanted to get like the hierarchy of the, of the chapter sort of established at first. Um, so I've literally made, I've got a few captains still to make, they're named, but, um, and also the chapter master, which is, oh, which I'm actually going to make last because I think that I know what I want for him and what him to look like, his name and all that kind of stuff. But I want to do them last. It's like the cherry on the cake or the piece de la resistance, as mm. you would say, Paul. Um, I would uh, say that, yeah. It's, <laughs> That's uh, what I say all the time, yeah. isn't it? Um, and, piece de la resistance. <laughs> um, and uh, so with that being said, I know the numbers are a little bit thin compared to, to where probably Joe is going to be with all the models he's been making and, and also so he says with so, so, he yeah, says. so he says uh, and with the 10 that you're going to you're going to have done I at some point in the next millennium I know so. it's conveniently actually that Joe left out something in last week's episode which was that <laughs> when he said he had his game coming up at the weekend and that was why he was building all of his army I don't know if you recall James but he actually asked before he started building all those models. He actually asked us if he could borrow our set that we painted the Hawk Lords <laughs> because he didn't have did, anything ready. I did not hear that, but <laughs> that's very, very cheeky. Um, so yeah, but I, yeah, so I've made the chief. Oh, uh, that's frowned upon, isn't it? Borrowing someone else's painted army. To, I don't know. Well, oh. the, the irony is that he's in a challenge with us to see who could paint some stuff first yeah. and he's looking to borrow some models that we painted. Technically we win. Uh, so joint victory. <laughs> yeah, we completed this enough. a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've got, I've got, I've been basically just, uh, because of the whole sort of like ethos of the chapter, how they're all about like shock assault and all that kind of stuff. Like I, I wanted even the intercessors to look like they're either firing or charging or advancing on mm. positions and stuff like that. And a lot of the standard intercessors, the poses that you get, you don't really have like, you don't have like actual proper shooting poses. Like a lot of them don't have, you can't really make them super shooty as in they look like they're taking a shot or they're charging mm. or things like that. There's definitely a couple of options. However. Okay. However, from my research, the original Dark Imperium easy build ones. Oh, okay, maybe that's why I thought have yeah. amazing poses that are like shooting, advancing while firing. Like, mm. like, like they've got some. So I literally went on a pilgrimage to eBay <laughs> and uh, procured reinforcements. Hello, eBay have arrived friend. in a Command and yeah. Conquer style statement. Um, so I've got twenty incessors. That I've been bought, stripped of the previous paint job, cleaned of mold lines because they still had quite a lot on them, and mm -hmm. barrels drilled with old Barry, mm -hmm. um, and then um, Barry the Bosch. Barry Bosch, and, oh, and right. then uh, and then the drill, uh, yeah, and then that rebased with base material, undercoated, and then siege armored. So they are they are all ready to go, Johnny Go Go. Um, and, and I'm going to batch paint twenty intercessors. That's twenty, twenty, 20, 20 George. Yeah, I'm going to batch paint oh, 20 intercessors because I want to get a core 
part of the of mm. what's going to be the army done. And they're all in this advancing like uh, like they, I've picked specific ones. I as I said, I scoured eBay to find specific poses from that in in that original dark. Are they harder to find these days? No, no, they're, they're like they're, there's various places you can get them. Obviously, eBay, Troll Trader, different places. But it's looking for certain poses. There's some really mm. cool ones that like advancing with the gun slightly down whilst looking looking. How up, many was like, in Dark Imperium? Was that only ten? Ten, yeah. That was Hellblast. Yeah. So, well, it was, so it? if you want to know, it's Squad A. Right. From the instructions yeah. that has more of the poses which I have hunted down, basically. So, what, I mean, I have got some other intercessors, some normal ones. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just basically mishmash them in together so that the squads do look quite varied in the posing, if that makes sense. I, I, I said, I often find that, like, when you look at Marine armies, especially, specifically, obviously, Primaris ones, Attack units or like uh, or intercessor squads tend to look very very similar, like just because of the, the limited posing options and things like that. So, I think inevitably, I'll end up with squads that look a bit more varied because I've mixed like the Dark Imperial Marines, I've mixed obviously the standard intercessor ones, and what I am doing, I'm kind of using assault intercessor legs with intercessor arms, so that I've got like the charging poses as well. Mm. So like, hopefully, with all those three things going together, I'll end up with intercessor units that look a bit more varied imposing which is their goal anyway and 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 i think i like about using intercessor assault intercessor legs is they've got the extra hip armor so they look a bit up armored as well which mm. i think is quite nice i'm well. looking at the um the box art photos from dark imperium the sergeant for that kit is rad he's got like the the bolter held out to the side yeah yeah he's great so, he's yeah. really cool yeah yes. yeah but there's a couple, i didn't realize how different these poses there's are. a couple that are like holding yeah. the gun up quite level like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, sh like shooting and one that's advancing forward and yeah they're quite dynamic as well which is quite cool so, so yeah, I just wanted the, I wanted the squads to look more sort of CG as if they're actually advancing. I, down I didn't even think stuff. about the fact that they would have different poses. They're I just great. assumed it was always the same. But, and also yeah. the bolter, the bolt rifle is slightly different to the, uh, to the, um, the, the new intercessor one. So what I've noticed, we're going to talk about it today, obviously, but, um, but space Marine in the game, when now they've animated, obviously, through the game the way that the bolt weapons were that weird cog round bit on the, the drum part on the top of the gun hmm. every time it fires that thing rotates yeah but it's interesting on the this is me being a complete nerd uh the ones from imagine that on this podcast yeah. the ones oh. from dark imperium the uh that's cog thing is kind of half buried in the gun it's not the whole cog isn't visible whereas on the new ones like the cog is completely visible so just not they're just a different style rifle as well which looks quite good um i am considering cutting off the sickle mag and sticking on box mags onto them as well because i think box mags on those guns would look amazing whatever well. slows you down yeah whatever slows well, they're, all, they're all they're all main colored so they're all siege armored now ready to go so let Definitely. the let the, mm. the pin shading begin um, so will you have like a, an equivalent of like a combat patrol fully painted soon with like 20 is way more than the combat patrol I've got twenty. Oh, I've got twenty intercessors, yeah. all, all painted. Uh, sorry, all all ready, all ready, ready to go. Uh, gotcha. like with main color on and base material yeah, yeah. and everything on. And then I've got about three, four captains done. High chaplain, uh, chief apothecarian, master of the forge. I've made, I've made a read called master yeah. of the forge, which I really like. Um, yeah. So I've, I've basically, and also I've made, I have started making the elite of the chapter. So I've made three. They're called the Obsidian Guard. They're basically the. It's a. Do they oh, have black armor? Yes, they do. Yeah. Black and black and emerald with mm -hmm. the brass as the like the yeah. ornate bit. Like the so, like, so what I am trying to do is, I've, as I'm developing the chapter, what I'm doing is basically because obviously one thing I do love about Dark Angels and Blood Angels is they have different colors for different things. So mm. first company are all called Obsidian Guard, and they're all going to be in black armor. And then obviously there's going to be different parts of the chapter that have got different, not different colors, but things that isn't make it, them it, obsidian. Isn't, isn't that like volcanic glass? It's, I, it's another yeah. name. It, yeah, it is, it's yeah. another name. Used I've heard black, only a yeah. diamond pickaxe can break obsidian. <laughs> I've never heard. James, it. James wouldn't yeah. get that. I've been, not, I've been schooled head. today because I was. I just know it's a color. So yeah. Uh, well, or, yeah. Speaking of video games or computer games, whatever yeah. you're so inclined to call them, uh, we're actually having to pre-record this episode because apparently everyone's decided to take the whole week off yeah. to play Space Marine Two. Yeah. So yeah. if you're wondering our thoughts on Space Marine Two, you'll get them next week because uh, we're playing it now. I guess. Yeah. Everyone's back uh, when this is, yeah. yeah. Everyone, is James, great. have you bought a, a console special for the occasion? I have ordered and purchased and acquired a PlayStation 5. Not an Xbox 5 or a PlayStation 2. Or an He's Xbox. called it all sorts of yeah. things. It's yeah. been, been absolutely lots, been lots of names. Look, a it's, been, it's been 12 years since I have played video slash computer slash video games. So, so yeah, so it's um, mm. it's been a long time coming. But yeah, PlayStation 5 is acquired. Um, and I'm ready to purge your body is the ready Xenos now. filth of the <laughs> 41st millennium. Well, you know what would be good to uh, to play that with? What we got sent. 
we got sent by Warhammer Merch the Space Marine 2 edition PS5 controller. It's very pretty, isn't it? It is. Uh, it's pretty nice. rad. Comes a cool little, cool little collector's box as well behind me. Fun it's little uh, graphic on the front. So uh, hopefully, we... hopefully that will give me extra Emperor's Wrath. Just it gives by, you plus uh, one, just plus one, it? plus one to dice rolls. Rumor yeah. has it that uh, you will be a much more skilled gamer for using it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's yeah. got the blessing of the Omni Sire. So, uh, so but considering you're... you haven't played anything for. What was it, 12 years or whatever? 12 it was? years, yeah. yeah. I need, I need how, every, every bit of help I can get. How, so. What a waste. <laughs> As someone who hasn't gamed in years, give, give a grip on that. How's that feel? I, I yeah. did play a PlayStation oh. 2. I own the PlayStation 2. So I do know what the controller basically feels like. You it's know what's a, cool yeah. about It's got extra wings than the, uh, <laughs> than, than the, uh, the other controller from this, the PlayStation it's not 2. It's not exclusive to this controller specifically, but what's cool about the PS5 is that the triggers uh, on the PS5 are adaptive. So okay. when you're playing different sorts of games, there's like more resistance in the triggers. Oh, right. They've got okay. loads of motors in them. Yeah, got so when you're they've firing, got when you're firing like a gun in a game, uh, it will literally like click like a real trigger. Oh right. Awesome. Or there's also other games where there's like more resistance. So there's like a demo yeah. where you know, you're like winding up like a spring, and as you feel it, it gets like stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. I'm gonna say this cool. now. This is how long it's been since I've had a console. Okay. The lot every console I've ever used, the controllers had a wire attached. <laughs> You wow. never used a wireless controller, no, I've never mate. Used... Rechargeable USB C. That's incredible. Mm, yeah. yeah, I'm ready. I'm uh, I'm ready. But um, hopefully, my faith is also to purge lots of tyrannids. But yeah, no, I'm really really excited. There is a there is an affiliate link for this down in the description below. So if you want to check it out and some of the other Warhammer merch, then uh, visit the link. Helps us out. I'm getting stoked for a little podcast let's play on the on the co-op. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. As I said, I've been familiarising myself with the lingo. All the Blood Angels DLC will be happening, uh, and I'll be uh, I'll be brandishing lots of lots of red, black, and gold. So yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait for we'll the sort see. of like 2011 era like gamer insults that James yeah. is sort of catching yeah. up to. You noob! Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, so yeah, Paul, um, you're you're one of the members taking a week off to play. Yes. Uh, I mean, don't see an issue with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm, it's not, I'm not sure who approved the holiday for all of this, but uh, <laughs> I don't, don't know who, who does that. It's yeah. not to do that. Obviously, you know, daughter's back at school, so there's lots of school. Oh yeah, school oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna yeah, be yeah, busy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I might be able to squeeze in some time for it, but um, what for everything else other than playing Space Marine? I'm sure I'll find time to play, but it's more of a social thing with me and my mates when we can get together. See that they work. I think one of them's got a day off, so we might <laughs> rather foolishly he took the Monday off. So I don't think he's going to get much gaming done then because obviously it's not, it doesn't go live to a certain point in the day. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely have a, a bit of time to muck about on it. I'm, I'm well up for it. Like I think the thing I'm the only game I ever played online with other people was as, as I've mentioned that other episode Halo, was, was uh, well I played Halo but not mm. online. Sorry, the online. only game you've ever played online with other people, as in on a console, was Fantasy Star Online when I had a GameCube. Yikes. So that's the only um, one that I've played. So every other every other game has always been from a single player ex, like experience or perspective. So yeah. It's going to be interesting to play games online with people and hear people talking. That's going to be interesting for me. I've is never this, done that. Is this going to be like a make or break for getting you into computer gaming? Poss I don't want to tempt fate because I'm really concerned. I, I struggle with like having a lot of free time around work and other things I do. And like, I'm scared. As I'm, I'm as much excited as I'm ex scared because it, mm. it's like I'm kind of opening the door. The, the door, you know what I mean? And and like, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it, not do anything online to start off with. I'm just going to play the single player campaign so I get used to the controls, used to playing, etc. Because I and also I like doesn't want to look a complete I, tool. Yeah, there, <laughs> is that, yeah, there is that there is that as well. And then once I've once I've um learnt the path of vanquishing tyrannids yeah. on my own, I will then enter the soiree that is on the Don't have to worry, game. James, get in my backpack, I'll carry it <laughs> to, to the finishing line. Yeah. Out. yeah. I, I I think I think I'm I'm not sure what I think one of the different types there are, there's obviously quite a few different types, so I'm not too sure. I think I'm just gonna Oh, you mean in terms of like editions of the game? No, not editions of the game, as in types of like the you got like the bulwark, which is like oh, the, the classes, close, the classes stuff, right, okay. yeah. Like so yeah. I really do like the blade the blade, classes, the, yeah. the blade guard. I think that'd be quite cool. Um and I've always I've the power sword is literally my favourite weapon from 40k. So yeah, that's, that sounds like that sounds a bit of me, but also I think the incest, just the bogstand incest, could be fun as well. So, so yeah. Start off like it's like learning to to walk and to run. It's just baby steps. Yeah, yeah. Right? Don't don't go too crazy too soon. That's why I'm doing. That's, 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 that's why I'm doing the campaign. On my I, own. I, tell, I tell you what, I can't wait for the first time that his controller speaks to him. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speakers in the controller. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, and it is. It, it, I didn't know this, and. And if I nearly threw it accidentally across the room when it's like oh because you was on Xbox before wasn't you yes yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I I think I was I was doing some sort of demo on the PS5 and the the first noises that came out of the controller were 
like these horrific baby crying noises from sort of some spooky game. It's like, Ooh. Yeah. so I thought, well, I'll turn that off. So I, I never use that now. Yeah. That, it's, that's off. It's like um, additional like is audio. That haptic feedback? Is that called haptic feedback or something like no, that? No, haptic feedback is the is type the, of vibration. Yeah. Rose and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, I, the, it will do, the speakers in the controller are typically like additive stuff. So like if someone's speaking to you over a radio, it will typically yeah. come through like the controller. Yeah, I am, I am super, super excited for it. Yeah. So, so yeah, so it, sh so it should be, it should be good. But yeah, I'm going to do the, the campaign because I really, I love the story of Space Marine 1, like the game. Uh, obviously, how tight things are left with Titus. And obviously, I, I've tried to avoid seeing spoilers and stuff like that. Like, there's mm. been a couple of like clips and stuff like that. So, like, I'm it's aware. Very difficult I'm aware to avoid it yeah, at the minute. I, I've seen the Death Watch, like, sort of short thing that, mm. you know, so I've seen that. So, I know kind of like a little bit. But yeah, I just want to play the play the single player campaign, enjoy that, um, get the next part of the story. And then, um, and then yeah, then, then dive into doing some online stuff. That should be fun. Yeah. Whilst trying to paint all the things I've got to paint. I know, right? You know, so, so yeah. Video games can be less intense than painting though because if you find the right game for you, like a lot of them are, you can just jump in, play it for half an hour and then turn it off. Yeah, I'm not yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, it does depend on the game because like, for example, uh, a game, this is older now, but a game I play with my friends a lot is Rocket League purely because each match is five minutes. Yeah. So we can play like, if we've literally only got like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, because we're quite busy in the evenings typically, we can just play a few and then disappear. Yeah. 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 No, I'm, I'm, I'm keen. So yeah. And we can do some, we can do some like three player cult missions and stuff and record it or whatever. That'd be quite fun. So yeah. Yeah. Maybe that can be some Patreon content. Could do. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. Might be fun. Um, yeah. yeah. That could be do a little let's play for the patrons. Yeah. yeah. That'd be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So, yeah. I think that'd be worth worth the money for the subscription just to see James fumbling around like a buffoon with a. Yeah, no, I'll be good. Just stand back and watch it. I'll, no, play, right, I'll, play the single, <laughs> I'll play the single player campaign. I, he's, defi I'm, he's definitely going to be one of these people that just as soon as the game or whatever starts up, just goes sprinting off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's mul mul jump, jump assault, away. jump assault, marine or intercessor yeah. or ball walk. They're going to be they're going to be the choices for me. I think nice. I'm going to stay uh, stay close to home. With well, good the, luck. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> I can't wait to carry him. <laughs> I can't wait to have you in my backpack. You won't, need to, get, you won't need to carry him. We'll me. see. We'll yeah. see what happens. So, yeah. Computer yeah. games are like riding the bike. You once you 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 you'll, you'll pick it up straight away. That's yeah, fine. I think yeah. you'll be as soon as that you know the game loads up, he'll sort of the whole world will disappear, and then two days later he'll crawl out of his room again. I don't even think we're going to get that far. I think James is going to be like setting his. Pit. I feel like sometime this weekend I'm going to get like a, a FaceTime call from James, and he's trying to like plug the HDMI in. <laughs> To the back of the console. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to get as far as this. No. Just, 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 be just, just wait and see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Anyway, look forward to that. It'll be good. Nice. Uh, well, in other Warhammer news, uh, I read my first codex. Holy cow. That was exciting. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so I, I remember got... when I had my first beer. <laughs> <laughs> so, everyone, as someone who's not a gamer, mm. I've like literally never picked up a book for 40k or anything before. And then, obviously, I got the got hands on the, the Blood Angels box. Uh, which GW sent us and having mm. a little I was like I'll have a little flick through because I'm you know doing some yeah. stuff I didn't realize very naively I didn't realize how much like non-gaming stuff is in those books yeah, yeah. So there's like lo loads of lore which is cool but then there's obviously like all the color schemes then like all the iconography and like here's what this company uses this, yeah. this there's some like just nice eye candy like photos and stuff yeah. inspiration. There's, there's some paint uh, really cool in the new codexes there's also a lot of there's some painting sections as well which is quite yeah. good because they disappeared from the codexes for quite some time and it's actually really nice to have a dedicated painting section for the army that you're collecting as well yeah. I think that's quite a good thing it's um it's good to see that back in codexes yeah so, yeah. So, yeah yeah yeah, so yeah. I, haven't, I haven't gone like cover to cover especially on the rules and stuff because that yeah, doesn't interest me in the slightest but i've had a uh, had a bit of a cursory read of the first few bits. I'm quite quite what looking forward to it. Oh, codex is so good. Yeah, used to collect the all art, the codexes. The artwork is mm. absolutely amazing. Like, it's just such a good book. Yeah, I'm I'm super happy with the book. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. So, I think I might pick up more in future, just on the basis of I didn't realize like how much value there was in terms of like inspiration and mm. yeah background and just like it's a nice reference for like what icon are they supposed to use for yeah. like, a second company and then you can just see. Well, it. I easy. mean, back in the day before the internet. I mean, they was our only source of all that information. That was your 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 that faction. Was much, you know yeah. I mean? yeah. So I mean, I think I had, like especially sort of second edition and all that lot. Is, I think I bought every codex that came out. Mm. As soon as it came out, you bought them. But I mean, they were like twelve quid back then. Back then, yeah. Even you know, for like so. armies you didn't play or yeah, yeah they're such good yeah. books. Like, yeah, they, they were really thick. Had loads of like in depth background on okay. them as well. It's I really suppose you didn't really have anywhere else to get it from. Us. Not really. No, yeah. No, yeah. And I, I suppose back then was you know super into actually playing the game as well so it didn't really matter if that wasn't an army that i was interested in i still learned the rules for that army 
back when you need an abacus. That's it. Yeah, to play twelve tones and stacks of cards <laughs> everywhere and all that sort of stuff. But like you say, they were a great source of all the different color schemes. Yep. Everything, all the artwork. You used to, you know, just sit and copy pictures from it, draw pictures from it, all sorts of stuff. They were yeah. great. I knew there was a couple of bits in it. I knew it wasn't just literally rules, mm. but I always assumed that that would be much like the more marginal section. than it was. I thought you might get like a page. Yeah. You don't. It's like, you know, half the book. So. And yeah. the story, like there used to be like two or three pages of like, stories. stories yeah. And yeah, yeah, short yeah. stories and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That used to be so yeah. cool. Yeah. Short yeah. stories are always nice as well because yeah. you haven't got to commit yourself to a whole book. Yeah. You just get a my nice little snapshot. My favorite mm. bit is actually the pages that basically through all the different, like from M41 to M42, it, it says all different battles and all different things that like, mm. that like the, that, the arm it's just it's really i love those pages like you can literally sit there with a cuppa and have a read yeah it's just they're just really really good um but yeah it's good to see the thicker codexes with lots more in them so yeah i don't i haven't bought a codex for many years but then i think well i felt i definitely wouldn't have got one if i hadn't got that set it just happened to come happened yeah to come with it yeah yeah, yeah. But that you know great. i think if i was buying it just for the inspiration i think there's enough inspiration out there on the internet anyway that's fair i would definitely wouldn't do it for like Every faction, but like yeah. Blood Angels is obviously close to my heart, and it's the army I'm doing and stuff. So yeah. it just made sense. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. something really, really nice about having a book for yeah. your faction, like and and especially, I mean, like, luckily the one that comes in that set is is a, a special edition one. So it's got the different cover, and you've got all the yeah. different like the foil yeah. inlays and stuff. It's just, it's just, yeah. It's a, it's I'm, a, I'm typically like someone who's very digital focused. Like I don't like writing stuff down. I much prefer to have like you know notes up in my yeah. phone and stuff. So I didn't realize like the value of literally like at my painting desk i've got it like in one of my drawers and it's mm. like i can quickly just grab it and reference something rather yeah. than like okay i'll find the ipad and yeah exactly. search yeah. oh yeah. hang on scrolling through oh no ad block oh, and plus you know. in five years time when they change all the rules again and change the blood angel, blood angel army and issue a new codex you've got the old one which you can just pop into the loft yeah yeah. Which, yeah. Or know. if you decide to play that edition still, you can yeah. just put it, yeah. you know. Um, or wait 20, 30 years. Cool. Pop down a war boot, 2046. Uh, yeah. <laughs> James will be there. Still hunting for we'll, bargains. Wheel me in. I'll be wheeling in a wheelchair. <laughs> like literally, I'll be able to always like the Lord I, Emperor I, 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 himself. I, 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 I'm a frame. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Uh, okay. Uh, before we get into the main topic, we're on a march to 50,000 subscribers. Did you know that 40.6% of you listen to this podcast every <laughs> single week, but you haven't clicked the subscribe button? You're killing us. We're so close. Really want to get to 50K subscribers. So if you could please, please click that button below. It massively helps out. It takes you two seconds. You get notified when we upload new episodes. You won't miss any more from us in the future. And we would very much appreciate it. That said, uh, are Age of Sigma models actually better than 40K? This is something that I feel like of late we're hearing a lot of community yeah. rumblings, rumblings about. Rumblings yeah. about it, yeah. yeah. The bellies are rumbling. Yeah. True. Oh, okay, um, that's it. Done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I suppose, right, okay. This is my little take on it, right? Especially from the new, newer, newer iOS stuff. Yeah. Yes. Right? You're, You're coming in with a definitive answer. Oh, I, okay. It's not nuance. You're just going in straight I don't know, in with I yes. Think, because I, obviously, I get to see a lot of really cool miniatures now. Obviously, we get sent quite a lot. And, and we'll, to, we, we'll, we'll be talking about as well what you've painted up for us here for this week. Which uh, is another one, example one of, of the really new cool ones. Miniatures. So, yeah. But I don't know. A lot of the, I mean, I, I don't really, I don't play OS or anything like that. But a lot of the fantasy miniatures, it, they are just so cool. They just like, a lot of them are so detailed. A lot, especially not like the um, sort of the more sort of chaosy and undead type things. They just they look so grisly and they look like they've had a lot of thought put into them. They, they just, I mean, they're so a lot of them are dynamic poses. I mean, they're great. They just look really good. I think that, but comparing that, I mean, there's obviously great miniatures for 40k, but it just seems like a little. Well, from my point of view, I kind of like the AOS. I mean, just from a hobby painting point of view, yeah, I kind of like the AOS stuff a little bit better. Okay. Well, on that regard then, because uh, you spoke about painting specifically, let's uh, put a pin in that debate then. For what now. have you uh, been painting for us? Uh, my, quite, a, quite a big model. Yeah. yeah. You can hold it up if you want. Yeah. Can I? Well, I've, I've you can got hold the, the box up. You haven't got the miniature with us, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> one to one scale. Look, my, it's as big as my head. <laughs> um, yeah, it's my pretty much my worst nightmare. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, that's a good to way to start. But <laughs> yeah. fair play for tackling something. Having that just said that your worst least... nightmare in terms of it's a scary demonic looking thing, or worst well, nightmare in terms of painting. I, 
at the start of this year, I sort of promised myself I would paint a bigger miniature rather than just painting sort of space marine size things or you know sort of normal sort of single miniature sort of standard sizes. Um, I did paint something a bit bigger, which was that harbinger of yes, you did, yeah, of decay. Great, great model that, which was really cool. That was like the biggest thing I'd painted for a very long time. But I, I did. I sort of promised myself this year that I would paint something like sort of. Um, like Angron sort of size, yeah, yeah, yeah. much bigger with wings. Because I hate painting wings. I hate painting big, flat, open spaces, like panels and things. Cloth and stuff like Cloth that. and things like that. Um, I'm just not, you know, it's just not my cup of tea. Uh, anything bigger than a space marine, it's just out, way outside my comfort zone. So I yeah, thought, yeah. I'll, I'll try it. I'll do it. I'll work up to it this year and I'll definitely paint something bigger. And of course, I've got the opportunity this year. I didn't have opportunity up until about now just the, the opportunity just hasn't come up but partly as a joke uh when this when uh visit scour came in i said yeah i'll paint it and i didn't think anyone that uh, you'd say oh yeah all right and then, then we held, held you to it ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. so and then i and then i sort of backtracked and said oh it's fine i was i was just joking um so we, we weren't though i know <laughs> i was kind of hoping that someone else would say oh yeah that's all right i'll paint that you know when they when they're out the actual artists from the studio would paint it but no one no one came forward so I sort of took it home and I think you're being very humble because your painting from when you joined here with us has I mean your painting was a decent standard when you, when you joined us but I think obviously through all the different little things that you've been doing your own painting yeah. your own time and, and yeah. just I think through like just like you said just painting stuff that you're not normally used to like that Harbinger and Decay was amazing and like um, even like the uh, Empress Champion done recently that's really good so that, this is like a the next jump if that makes sense in what yeah but the way i I'm, i sort of look at this at the minute you know when you get like um if you get a digital image mm -hmm. that's kind of small and you can see all the nice detail on it yeah but then you you blow it up but you don't alter the resolution of it yeah so the, the the picture is then distorted that's kind of how my painting <laughs> no i don't think so working for this one. but look it's 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 so big compared to anything else i've ever painted right but that's a, that's a lie. I did paint an orc stomper once about I don't know x amount of years ago. That was the biggest thing. But this is so highly detailed yeah. and so big by comparison. Um, it it at times I was so frustrated with it, and I had to sort of. But that that's good though because it means you're growing. Well, I mean, I mean, just look at it, right? He's got I, this I, massive I haven't skull. properly looked at this model, by the way. So literally, there we like, go, yeah, I, I haven't He's, probably looked at it. So I, I think, mean, if you're if you're watching on YouTube, it's obviously uh, on screen now. But uh, but to, like sixty percent of him is like this huge green skirt that he's, that he's yeah, kind yeah. of wearing, like, a, like this long draped skirt, which is like built up of lots of different. I, I'm so thankful it's not all one piece. It's yeah. kind of sort of patchwork of different coloured leathers or whatever it is. I really struggled to get a good coverage on that because I haven't got an airbrush or that I don't use. It's I think it's, this is a, the one thing that's actually made me think perhaps I should yeah. learn to use a paint uh, an airbrush for yeah, this yeah. sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so I really I, I almost gave up. I almost gave up when I was painting that because I just thought it didn't matter how many sort of thin <laughs> layers I was putting on it. It's like, it just looks a mess. Um, but then I thought, well. I can't really get a, a totally smooth finish on it. So I quite like painting textures. So I'll paint texture on it to s not s to cover it up, but yeah, yeah, to try and say. to, so all the, all the, the skirt is kind of painted as though it's, it's got like a cross hatch. Oh, wow. Awesome. It. Yeah. Um, it looks all right. It looks all right. <laughs> I'm quite happy. I was, once I'd done that, I felt much better about it. And I thought, yeah, I'll carry on. Yeah. But you see how like that, being outside your comfort zone and then approaching it and going, oh, I'm going to try that or I'm going to do this. Mm. Did you see how that then prompted you to go, okay, well, that's not how I want it, but then I'm going to do this. And then that resolved it. Does that yeah, make sense? I, so like, yeah, it was, it was like, the, you know, I had to think of a workaround to get around not giving having, up. Well, not giving up, but not yeah. having an airbrush to, to cope with those vast and that's, flat surfaces. That's exactly it. It's, it's prompting you so, to make decisions and yeah. do stuff that maybe necessarily you wouldn't normally do yeah. follow. and that i think that's one of the good things when you do paint something that's totally different to what you normally do but um do you yeah. want to walk us through the process of, of sort of start to finish how you painted it uh well step one is panic <laughs> 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 hit that red button <laughs> <laughs> you open the box and think 
oh my god, this just look at it. And it, it, it sort of goes, you know, those sort of globe puzzles that you can buy, those 3D globe. It goes together like that. So you've really got to hold it together while you it's a nightmare. But it's <laughs> but again Was it was it hard to build then? From from my sort of amateurish point of view of only building space marines and very small figures, you know, that have got four or five bits to put together. Yes. Um it went together well. And there was a couple of tricky bits, like the, the the only leg that you can see. There's no sort of pins or pegs to go into the into the kilt. It's, a, it's two flat surfaces. And it doesn't show you kind of where to put that. Right, okay. So you've got to kind of line that up with the base, which you can't stick it to, because if you stick it to the base, then the base is in the way while you're painting it. So you kind of hold it on there, and you're trying to hold the leg on until it sort of slides into position, and hold that there till it glues, and then think, when you take it off, hopefully that will be in the right place when I go to put it on the base. But um, but yeah. Other than that, I, there was quite a lot of sub assemblies. I kept the head off because that covers so much of it. Yeah, yeah. All this, uh, up on the back, on the shoulders there. Uh, I don't know if, he, if he's got a picture of that on here, but he's got he's got loads of rats underneath. He's uh, sitting on the back of his collar. Yeah, little friends. Yeah, I, and to get the access to the other side of that, if you put the head on there, you would you'd never get access to that. Or so most, is, that, most is, the, the is the head completely separate? The head, yeah, this whole section here with all the horns. Oh, amazing. It's separate, comes off. And that, even the face is like six pieces, all these little tiny triangular pieces in there, which is quite new to me because I was just, I just think, well, it's just going to be like two halves and go together. But yeah, yeah. But no, they like to throw a spanner in the work. I guess that's, you know, content, as, a, as they say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just to make you last, make it last a bit longer. Yeah, I mean, it, it is absolutely covered in detail like i thought i didn't realize how detailed it is my favorite bit little rats on top I, of yeah, stuff I, I i yeah yeah that's great that's really cool there's loads of rats all over him you, every time you i thought you think oh i've done all the rats now and then i spin him around i think oh no nope, there's another one well he is he is the prophet of the horned rat the horned rat yes yeah. so yeah so he's it, i like the fact that um You've got material, you've got cloth, you've got wood, even like the, the stave or the cane that he's got. He's, he's obviously got wood, you've got mm. brass. So there's loads of different things like textures and materials to paint on there, which is great. And um, it looks like he comes with a tactical building by the looks of it. It does, head. yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, this is actually, this <clears throat> kind of fence, sort of broken sort of fence work that he's stepping on is that fencing is over one of those kind of swirling wall oh, walls cool. as well. Oh, like, awesome. over, so that's kind of coming out of that. So yeah, there's a lot going on there. What was your favourite bit of painting on him? Uh, I have well the face, cool. Okay. I, got, <laughs> I got quite like I quite enjoyed painting his little his little rat face. That was quite <laughs> nice. Uh, I mean it, it's ginormous, but uh, I think there's a, there's a lot of character there, and it's it's very well defined. So it's it almost paints itself really. We frequently hear from you with questions asking how you can paint like our team of world class and award winning artists. Teaching is something that all of the team here at Siege are very passionate about. And we want to share with you the methods and techniques that we use to paint every single day all of the incredible miniatures and armies that you have seen from us. With the Seed Studios Patreon, you'll gain access to a growing catalogue of over 300 step-by-step -step tutorials covering a huge variety of colour schemes, miniatures, painting styles and techniques from beginner-focused foundation tutorials to full character masterclasses. Each lesson comes in a beautifully designed and easy-to-follow PDF format with accompanying artist commentary with new tutorials added every single week. Your subscription also includes access to our private patron channels on Discord so that you can interact directly with our artists asking for questions or feedback. You'll also be supporting the podcast directly, helping us to bring you these episodes every single week. So if you want to take your painting to the next level and make the most of your very valuable hobby time, head over to patreon.com forward slash siege studios did is you it, find it easier painting a face that's larger uh well i mean yeah compared to a little diddy space marine face yeah because you know i've got nice lovely little brushes and they can they can get to those details really you know a lot easier than they can on a space marine um but i quite even in his yellow yellowed fingers that was quite <laughs> quite enjoyed painting that you know spending all that time painting all like the flesh tones and then thinking I just need to yellow those, stain those up. So, you know, just getting the some yellows out and just staining everything Did up. Did you do much of that on the Harbinger of Decay? Because if I recall from the box art, there was kind of some similar sort of blends going on with like the sort of <laughs> decay and, enough, and whatnot. Color-wise, he's very similar. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I used the same recipes for the fabrics as I did for the Harbinger of Decay just because I thought, I know those recipes. Work, yeah. I haven't got to mix any colors. Yeah. And so I can just, I know it's a lot of area, but I can just do the same 
thing and get it down quite quick. That kind of goes back to what we were saying though, with like doing these projects. Because I remember at the time you'd done the Harvard of Decay, you was like, oh, it's so different from everything I painted before. Mm -hmm. But then now you're going on to this one, which is so different to everything you painted before. You're going back to the things you learned on the previous one, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So, it's good because then you go it's back. It's a good stepping stone. Yeah, 100%. You go back, you redo what you've done previously. You've learned how to do it on that previous thing you take it forward and then and then you refine it or get it better on that next one would you agree or disagree is the cloth or the, the way you've done the cloth in this one better or worse than the harbinger of the UK? um or same but different i don't know it's, or did you find painting it easier at least just because you sort of done it before because of what you learn well i mean it, i think the the process of i've got mixed colors or what or what colors that that part of the process was taken away because I yeah. knew what I was going to do. So that was quite nice and easy. Um, of course, because I did all like, the cross hatching for to sort of represent some sort of fabric on there. It was time consuming, but I, I mean, it in my mind because it's so much bigger, it's difficult to sort of say. Yeah, no fair. No, it's, um, I, I mean, I do. I, yeah, it, I think it's okay. I think it's it's you're at always, least you're, on par. You're, you're always very very I, I, very <laughs> humble with your painting. I can't I know, wait. I can't wait to see it in the flesh. I'm, yeah, I'm on par. I think what I've managed to do though is I I've managed obviously with time and stuff that I've sort of had to do it, but everything was obviously base coated first. Yeah. Then washed, rebase coated, and then I've got two highlight colors on top. That's for everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sort of trying to stick to that kind of formula for everything now, just to sort of get in, into the habit of doing that sort of thing. I think the trouble I had as well was with, with the horns on the head. What, staining them and getting the transition? Staining, not so much the transition, but I mean, if, I mean, we, like if you look at them, there's so many ridges and bumps and all these kind of things around here. And it's just getting that, I almost sort of try to sort of dry brush just yeah, yeah. To, as a guide for myself to put put yeah. highlights on and things like that but i don't think that i mean they haven't gone as dark as they, these ones but i mean they could be darkened up at a later point if that was a thing you but, can always make things darker if you're not going yeah to, yeah but yeah. um yeah. yeah i haven't done i didn't obviously didn't do any of the freehand no. just because you know again, one step that, at again, a time, mate. again that's something you can add on though like you know you can and in fair play to yeah. you you've had limited time for doing this because gw sent us this model uh for preview, so yes. you're on a bit of a time crunch. As I well. think as well having the time, the limited time to do it was also a good thing. Yeah, just because it meant it kind of shoehorned me into do actually doing it. Yeah, because I think so. I think it's taken about thirty six hours. I think roughly. I mean, I've had some good solid whole entire yeah, days. thirteen hour it. painting session. And yeah, I've had some, and like, then so mo you know it nights here and there and first thing in the morning just doing bits and pieces but um so it's it's taken a good long time but if i if i had just bought this and then thought oh, i'll just paint it you know whenever i don't think i would ever finish it fair just because i think well i've got all the time i need i'll paint a bit of this today and then i'll be distracted by something else and then a new release comes out yeah there's something exciting. else that's yeah. way smaller and i think that's a victory that i can Dis i can distracted by the combat patrol <laughs> <laughs> well i mean but it's, it's good because it's it's kind of forced me in well I've got, i know i've got to get this done yeah yeah so let, let's just do it i yeah. just get on and get on and do it so just, just paint it just paint the thing just paint it yeah yeah i mean overall New slogan, just paint it. Just paint it. Yeah. yeah. Just for only the, I don't think any other company's got anything similar to that. Just just paint <laughs> just it. Just paint it. Just paint it. Yeah, overall. With a brush instead of a tick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think overall it was a, a nice opportunity to paint something much bigger than I would ever normally have picked for myself. Yeah, so. good. Yeah. Overall, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that you've done this without an airbrush. Yeah. Because I wouldn't Hats have off. even bothered to Seriously. face coat it without yeah. an airbrush. Hats off. You've done yeah. great. I, I think um, it would, an airbrush would definitely have made a, a, a great, a big difference. Yeah, of course. To, just yeah. in terms of speed, like to get the paint finish, like just yeah. face coating that much surface area is just not well, fun. Well, I, th I think that the, sk the skirt, I think that took, I mean, that took most of the, most of the time really. Like doing that, so it's a, a big a surface good, area. A whole, well. at least a whole day. I think in one that whole like that thirteen hour day that I did, I think I managed to base coat it in the different colours, get a wash on, and then sort of re base coat, and then that was it. Yeah, but still, that's a big, big amount. <laughs> I know it's a lot, 
That's, the, that's like, the slog though, especially on something like that. That's the, yeah. that's the slog. Like, cause then after that, you're just highlighting so it's selective placement of paint yeah. after and that. And I think so, that sort of, sort of kept me going because like, why are you doing it? You're thinking, oh, this is such yeah. a, it's, this it's, is tedious. Do you know, do you know what? I, like the base coating on a big model like that is very similar to the first majority color after the main color is on a model for me mm. when I'm doing a batch of like 10, 15. It's yeah. like, as an example, on Blood Angels or on Zempart, it's black. So it's like, oh, I've got to get black on like 20 models or 30 models, whatever it is. Like that's, that is a, that is the slog. And once you've done that, like everything else is easier because you, you're factually putting less paint on the model yeah. after that, after it's done. So, so fair play to you. Like a 13 hour sesh is just like, I'm jealous. I love a 13 hour <laughs> session. It takes me back. It's been a while I since love, I've had I a 13 hour session. I love a 13 hour yeah. sesh. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I was, I'm, you know, just tired. After I like painting this thing, it's like, grueling. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. grueling. It yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It made me tired. I mean, yeah. It's like you know, sitting there like when you're super hyper focused on on one object, you know, a few inches away from your face for an entire day, or even just the evening. Yeah, yeah. You know, you sort of stand up and you think, oh, it does take it out, yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, was you, this one where the time was like flying and you didn't realize how long it had been, or was it a was it a, was, was it work? <laughs> was it your version of my gene stealer abhorrent where I couldn't put the thing down and I was just like, oh, I mean, well. I, I, yeah, I mean, obviously we had you know got the iPad on, got this, got my t you know some TV shows, or whatever. I was, I was Listening on. to Paint Perspective. Yeah, oh, obviously <laughs> watching from Paint Perspective number one all the way through to fifty. Uh, uh, yeah, sure, it was, it was good, it was good. You know, speaking to my dad on the phone as I'm doing it. You know, just doing other things to occupy your mind the, whilst you're to occupy, occupy your non-visual attention. All right, I see a technical term for it. Well, if you're yeah. if you're if you're watching the program, obviously that's your visual attention. But if you have just got something playing in the background, yeah. that's a completely different bit of attention to what you're when you're looking at something. Yeah, it's um, sort of almost. Too, I don't want to say it was kind of it was sort of, the the tedium was there for painting all that the base colours, but obviously having whatever you like to listen to or like to watch generally in the background that sort of takes that edge off of it. Because I find that I find that painting becomes a bit like muscle memory, like yeah. as in like if you're if you've got like because I sometimes I'll have been a group call with friends on the phone or mm. I'll like have a po have a podcast on hopefully this one uh, you know uh, you should be watching this one while painting yeah. <laughs> yeah. but um, but uh, but and just, subscribing and subscribing mm. yeah yeah uh, but what I was gonna say was like having that other thing the actual physical painting especially when you're working on massive bits of color like that yeah like it. it you, that becomes a muscle memory and almost your attention can focus on something else, if that makes sense. And yeah. that, that kind of works really well, but yeah, fair play. I mean, like, um, I think airbrush for you is definitely something that, uh, yeah. that I, I can see, I can see an airbrush perhaps next year. That'll be my thing maybe to have a, have a stab at that and see how that goes. Cause even my biggest brush, <laughs> just didn't, <laughs> it, but even that, it, like once you've put your, you paint on by the time you've got some more paint on that first set of brush strokes is already trying to dry. Mm. And so the edges of where you've laid that brush stroke obviously dry quicker than the central yep. part of the paint. So when you put more paint, you've got like a dry line. Yeah. The amount of times I'm like frantically getting some more on and trying to smudge it out and things like that. So yeah, I mean, even, even a cheap airbrush, like it's not going to mm. be great for detail work, but if you're just base coating, coating big yeah. surface areas, like even yeah. a really, really cheap airbrush. Yeah. It's going to do that like so much better than yeah. I think, I and think faster than uh, just than a big brush. There, yeah. Big brush. yeah, I think for you know for a, a bit of an amateur at it, um, it was quite nice to tackle something this big. But it also sort of taught me that perhaps I should go back to painting smaller, not perhaps not something so big, um, but something sort of intermediate sort of size and things like that. I mean, but, I've painted rhinos and things like that back in the past. But I think, yeah. what this will do though is push your tolerance. Yeah. That's the thing. Like if you always paint smaller models, your tolerance for your max capacity is a small model. Whereas yeah. if you paint something big like this, it it, it pushes your tolerance. It's yeah. almost like going to the gym and always lifting the 10 kg dumbbells. You, you, that will eventually get super easy for yeah. you. Yeah. And then you just go in there and pick up those dumbbells and that's it. Whereas if you're consistently increasing the max what you do, yeah. anything beneath that becomes effectively easier. Well, so, it's the same. I, mean, I, I agree because, you know, looking back at the, some sprues that I've got with like some other minis, I think, oh, I must get around to paint. It looks a bit big and time consuming. I look at it and I'm just laughing my head off because it looks so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll give, you a, you we'll give you a, nerg a nurgling to paint or a, yeah. little rat, a little rat man and then you can... Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, it was a really nice opportunity to to paint cool. that. Cool. And you know, I can't wait to see it in hand. 
So yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, picking it back up then, me and James had a bit of a debate in the Hobby Hangout on Discord mm. over the whole uh, AOS models versus 40K thing, which is um, why well, I think this was the perfect model to sort of bring up on this week. I'm, I'm of the opinion that I think the reason people feel that AOS is getting like quote-unquote better models, mm. or like cooler models or more creative or whatever, I've always been of the opinion that because the particularly with Space Marines especially, like there's been a lot of like backlash lately over the Blood Angel stuff and then some releases before that. I think that they're very pigeonholed these days with the lore and the artwork because there's just so much of it. Like there's so many books now and then codexes and all that yeah. stuff and then all the artwork and it goes on. And it's like set in stone over the last like 20, 30, 40 years. Whereas the AOS stuff is a bit more... Of a black, like I know there's the law there and there's like the established characters and whatnot. I get all that, but it does seem like they're kind of a bit fresher and they've got more creative liberties that they can take without ticking people off too much. Because, yeah. for example, if there's a new Space Marines release for the Blood Angels, for example, people have got a vision in their head of what the Sanguinary Guard are supposed to look like and what they have to look like. Yeah. And they, anything less than this one perfectly specific thing isn't good enough. Whereas it does seem like with the AOS stuff, they're like, we need a giant demon rat thing. What would that look like? Yeah, yeah. Here I, it is. I yeah. think one thing just to throw in there is whilst I do agree with you because Age of Sigmar's narrative and lore is kind of like when it first came out, I don't know for anyone that, that Age of Sigmar, you're going to have to quote me in the comments because I don't know the exact time period, but what it meant a few years ago, whenever it was that it actually came out, the first rules for it and the first things for it were, were crazy. It was like, if you have a beard and you're a dwarf player, you get like d6 extra attacks when you charge mm. or something it, the rules were like it was like absolutely wild like okay and obviously then they really they brought out a new edition obviously that the law started forming and all, all those different things and um i do agree with you that um there is a there is more scope for flexibility within within the game which is creating these wonderful miniatures that are crazy uh, and, and how good they are however i think that as the game matures in age and it gains a bit of vintage to it, if that makes sense. Mm. I think the same thing will be evident within it because ultimately what it is is that it's got very rich, strong narrative. That's exactly that the 40k is, I mean, it started in 86, uh, like GW and all that. So like you're looking at 30, 40 year, years of narrative and 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 what people conceive and understand what a space marine is or what an orc is or what an Eldar is, or like all those things. So I do under, I do totally, totally get that. In the early days of a game system, like imagine if back in Rogue Trader, they were like, okay, well, Space Marines can have LAS guns, you know, or something. Or just, just yeah. even if you knew that from day one, yeah. then you just take that for gospel. And if they turn around and go, well, actually, now Space Marines have got this weapon called Bolt Gun. Oh, okay, cool. Like, you know, but the thing is, because Bolt Gun has always been the weapon that Marine has, mm. it has to be the weapon that the Marine has. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. So I, 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 I do agree with you. Like what I'm trying to basically say is we're, at the moment that we're in currently with Age of Sigma is almost like the beginning of 40k in Rogue Trade at the second edition where all the foundations of heritage and what make Age of Sigmar what it is is where it's being established so of course a giant rat demon rat man yeah is perfectly perfectly understandable because it's yeah. it's, a, it's a new thing that's come out for that faction having said that the reason why it's very clever is that Age of Sigmar is kind of like a reforging of one of fantasy so there are still things that nod quite nicely back to Dota fantasy. Yeah. All, all that being said, I 100% agree that a lot of the models that come out for Age of Sigma are absolutely amazing. Like, absolutely amazing miniatures. And in fact, for me as a painter, that when, I, when I, I'm used to painting Space Marines or used to painting 40K or used to that, I, I will gladly pick up an Age of Sigma character from something that's totally different from what I normally paint mm. because it's so refreshing and it's so different. And, and also emotionally, I've not got any preconceived expectations as to what I'm actually yeah. going to be painting for it as well. So that's kind of my point though, is it's so hard for them to do that within 40K at this point, because like to release, like classic example of this is not that long ago, they in effect kind of retconned the original Stormcast and then redid all of the armor. Yeah. And granted, there was a lot of people unhappy about it. The kind of overall consensus was from the majority of the community, the, the new sculpts looked better. Yeah. Whereas if you go back to when they decided to change Firstborn Marines to Primaris, to this day, everyone is still really jaded about it and you still hear people whinging about how the old ones look better. <laughs> so whereas even like while people might be upset with the Stormcast stuff that like they've got all the old models that they collected, like, yeah. everyone seemingly 
is like on the same page of the newer ones are a nicer looking sculpts and more. I agree. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, so the, 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 new but this is amazing. my point. So if they done, we know that they can't do that for 40k because of what happened with the Primaris stuff. So, and we know that when they come out with like new ideas and they do try to do new stuff, it's it's never to people's like expectations because there's all of this like established rule set. Yeah, yeah. Like mm. you saw them try to mix it up with the Desolation Marines. Everyone hated those. And <laughs> yeah. whether you're, whether that's right or wrong yeah. is up to you. But like when they try to do something like off script, yeah, everyone complains. Yeah. And then even when they try to do stuff like faithful to the character, they go, oh well, it's just it's, the it's, same, and they've just made it primaris. It, Couldn't they've changed it? It's like or they I'll... change it and they go, oh, they've changed it too much. It doesn't look like the artwork. Mm. I mean, they can't do right for doing wrong. Yeah, you're, you're right. It's exactly like 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 I said in another episode. Like you, then the the thought process of trying to please everybody is just such an impossible victory. Like it's just not it it cannot be done. Like or or, or if it is done, there's still a percentage of individuals which are like, oh, I don't like that. But you don't see that as much in the AOS community. But it I seems like everyone's much more chilled about it. I think it's it. because it's new. And I don't think it's so much of the stuff is set, in, is set in stone. They have a lot more flexibility with it because it's a brand new game system. That I, I mean, again, you're going to have to quote me of the year it came out because I can't remember off the top of my head. It was like 2015, 2017, somewhere in there. So it's had yeah. nine years. Okay, so nine years in the grand scheme of things. We've seen Stormcast come out. We've had them rejuvenated differently, obviously in the new in the new uh, in the new armor that they've got, which I do agree. I think the new armor mm. looks, looks way better. They more they look more like Greek warrior, like Spartan warrior now, rather than rather than um, heavily armored individual. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I just I just I I just I prefer them massively. And and but the thing is, is those old models, the old Stormcast, are still nice models. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, not, it's not they're nice not models. they're not nice models. I just. Yeah, I think I think you like anything. You need it needs time to 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 brew, and ultimately people get acclimatized to things that are within the game, and that's where the ties form. You know that people, you know people fall. As much as the miniatures are amazing, the thing that I personally think grips a lot of people within any of these game systems, be it Necromunda, be it Battlefleet Gothic, be it like any of these games, Blood Bowl, all these things. The thing that grips people isn't just the fantastic miniatures; it's the it's the lore and narrative and story, mm. yeah, that goes behind that. Because I always say this: like without that lore and narrative, and and it being part of a faction that has a background or whatever, that is just a miniature and it's a bit soulless. It's the lore and narrative that is the soul of the miniature, and then what you do with the paint job whilst honouring the soul creates the thing yeah. that you love. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like, I, I just think they've got more freedom because it's a younger game, personally, and I, and like, I yeah. I, Irrelevant of all of that, as I've said, like, I think the models and just the way that they're being designed, they do have the edge on 40k at the minute. You know, um, do you mean in like a removing like obviously personal bias and taste out of it? Do you mean like on a technical level, the sculpts are better? I just think that there's a lot, a lot more create. I, th I think there's there's a set of parameters when you're doing 40k models. Like you know, a Space Marine has to be a certain way, has to have these certain things. Like. I know it's it's right down to that the, the granular level of like uh we were speaking earlier about the bolt gun, the new bolt rifles having that cog thing that spins around on mm. top of the gun. Like there's there's kind of like it's almost like the DNA of that faction. Like you look at something like the Mechanicus models, they have certain shapes and certain things with them because then you instantly read that model as a Mechanicus model. Does that make sense? Whereas with this, they're still in that in that period where they're creating that that DNA of all the new factions. They're like like Iden Iden Thiepkin, for example, they were never a faction in in they're they're a, an, a shard of elves, but they're a complete new faction in Age of Sigma. And they're like, cool, okay, um, we want elves that are underwater that ride sharks and turtles, you know, like you know, and so with those parameters, you've got so much more flexibility to go. You if if they decide to to bring out and i think there's a model that is riding a seahorse but let's just say <laughs> I, I want a an a, a, a deep king lord that's riding a giant winged seahorse like mm. they, they can do that and no one's going to go well that's not how the faction should be but then once that model is in effect oh yeah well i want an army of knights knights riding seahorses you know what yeah. i mean like well, oh they would definitely ride seahorses what, like just see that that breeds that law and narrative and obviously when they create those create those models and those miniatures they have obviously a team that not only develop the rules, but they have someone in that in the company that develops a narrative and story of, the, of that model and the reason why that's come about. Touching on your point again about Primaris, I completely agree with you. I think I think the fact that Marine's got a brand new set of armor, brand new set of core things. I think that, you know, I think that's a good thing. But me personally, I think what they should have done is gone. We understand you want more upscaled models, okay? Here's a new addition. Marines have got a new form of armor. 
they're still Marines. Oh, and well, look now, because we realized that Marines are supposed to be tougher, they've got more wounds now and stuff like that. Like that, that for me, in my mind would have been a much easier way to just answer it. Yes. You'll have people go, yeah, but the Imperium's in stagnation. It should be in stagnation. There shouldn't be new technology and all this kind of stuff. But like, that's kind of why I understand they said, oh, Gunnerman created this during the heresy when, when he was alive with call, mm. because at that point there wasn't as much degradation of technology and stuff as, 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 there is now, if that makes yeah. sense. You know? There's so, a level of personal bias in there though, because as someone who got into the hobby post Primaris being rolled out, so I can just look objectively at the old firstborn stuff and the new Primaris stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just visually, I think Primaris looks cooler. So I don't think it's yeah. as simple as like yeah, I get that. all of that stuff no, behind it. Like I, some yeah, people yeah. It, it, because you're attached to the older stuff. Mm -hmm. So that discolour and like and to be fair, like you might just aesthetically prefer that. And that's yeah, fine. yeah, definitely. But I don't think it's as simple as like no one can like the new stuff. No, I, 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 I definitely find myself sort of liking whatever the newest, coolest thing is. Yeah. Just That's always, it's of, a shiny new thing. Yeah, you know? like, it's, it's like, like the, the rule of cool, you know. If, yeah. if, if, if that, if I don't the, think, yeah, but I didn't just like Primaris because it was new. I just prefer, like, visually, I think. Yeah, it well, that's what I mean. It, I mean, the, the new ones, it, I like the look of those better, or I like the look of that particular model. I think it's cool. And, uh, you know, I'm going to get it, perhaps, and paint it. I, th I think, like, going back to the topic at hand with, like, regards to Age of Sigma, I think, like, uh, there is there are so many awesome models, like, in Age of Sigma, which just just as, like, I think they're, they're, they're the sort of models that I like to paint because I don't have that emotional attachment to the lore and narrative to it. So, like, if I hmm. wanted to paint, like, let's just take Lario, like, amazing model, like, a, a, a queen standing atop a giant beetle, you know, like, how amazing does that sound as, a, as like, hmm. a, as like a, a, as a, as a brief for a project? The fact that, okay you've got the box art you've got some artwork of her etc but the fact that you can just go do you know what i really want to paint the shell on the beetle like a tortoise or like i want to do like yeah. this pattern on there or like they, do you think you could have had that in 40k though like do you think that gw missed a trick by like for example the newest faction to be added to 40k was votan yeah which is not really a new faction it's just bringing back an old one yeah so if there was a gap there, GW said, we can fit a new faction in this range. Do you think that GW messed up by not putting something completely brand new and fresh in where they could have just no rules, like made I, something from scratch? I remember when Tau came out, okay? And when Tau came out, it was like crazy refreshing. It was like, wow, there's this new faction. Like never, you know, not heard of them or seen them before. Like it's just, it's just new thing. And I like, I think, Factions and independent factions themselves, and also sub factions like Marines, chapters, Sisters Battle, Covents, Tyranids, Hive Fleets, all those things. You kind of like they're kind of like football teams, and I think people people get behind it, and like you yeah. you, you you get with a team, and that's that's your team. Do you know what I mean? Like you know, like Joel go West Ham till I die, or whatever, blah blah. You know, like that. Like you kind of like you you kind of like line yourself up with that thing, and I and I think that it would be cool to bring in a completely curveball faction that no one has like heard of or no one knows of at all whatsoever to re -bal not balance but re because I get hmm. I get the argument that like bloat like there's obviously a lot of models yeah now, of course there are. but that's yeah. why I brought Votan up as an example because that is a whole new range so there was obviously room for a new faction the, the and thing, they didn't choose to go for something completely new they kind of yeah, maybe played I, it safe completely new alien race the th thing is is you're aware of Votan being squats because of finding out about them, et cetera, from other people. But imagine you were just someone who just got into 40K, had been into 40K for a year or so, doesn't know about squats or the history of squats or all that kind of stuff, blah, 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 and just Votan comes out. It's mm. like, wow, like it's something completely different. And obviously then you find out that it was a previous faction or whatever. But well, I still G think... G yeah, but even in, even in like the trailer, I remember they done like a cinematic trailer and even GW, like the whole shtick was like, oh, we're back. Like, yeah, thing, wasn't yeah. It? no, so I get, even I get GW that. Acknowledged that. No, no, I get that. I, I do think there is opportunity to like. There are other factions like in 40k that there's never been a model for. Like there are there are other factions like um, so, some of the books that I picked up from Warboot when we spoke. Mm. We spoke Warboot. There's loads of like sketches of like different fa races and factions. Well, even as like, like a there. recent uh, heresy novel series reader, there's loads of like Xenos races and yeah. stuff that uh, yeah. you, you know you're trying to imagine them in your head because you've got no reference to draw from. Mm. Yeah, but there's loads, and I I think that. The thing is, they've got to be really careful because of all the things you said, like blow, obviously there's, yeah, when you bring out a new range, there's all the development of that range that comes into effect. You've got all the stocking, you've got all the different things like creating, they've got to create equivalents to all the predetermined 
types of miniatures that we know HQ models, treat models, and yeah, models, every faction needs a Rhino equivalent. Yeah. Yeah. Every yeah. faction yeah. needs I, a Dreadnought equivalent. Yeah, because so otherwise to this and a, yeah, exactly. Right. So there's a lot yeah. of thought that goes into. But I remember when Tau came out, and I was like, wow, this is really it. It like rejuvenated the game a little bit because mm. it was like, oh, it's something completely fresh. And it actually, what it does is it broadens the spectrum of players that can get into it because. If you're if you're a big fan of anime, and I think around that time, someone will quote me correctly it's in the like comments. Like the Gundam stuff, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Around yeah, that time, I think Games Workshop were just trying to expand into the Asian market, and like, what better way to expand into that market than bring yeah. out a faction, which essentially just so is happened. anime robots? You know, like yeah. you know, so it's it's a very smart, logical business decision to do that. Like to, when you're trying to go into a market, and there's a specific type of cartoon or or style of thing, and it's not evident within in the game format. With with Age of Sigma, the thing is, is like, as I said, like even like Deepkin are a good example. Like there were loads of high elf players, like mm. wood elf players back in the day in fantasy. But like because there's the ability to have silver F or like wood elves, and there's ability to have uh, Lumen F realm lords, which is obviously high elves, etc. You know, th to then go, oh, we're going to make some some sea elves. Do you know what I mean? Like or you know, yeah. So I, I think there's there's just a lot of more scope with it as a as a as a as a game. So do you, do you wish that they would do that for 40k then? I think what I would wish... Like in an ideal world. In an ideal world, I think, yeah, like the way you've got to see new factions coming into 40K is kind of like, um, it, it, it is kind of rejuvenating that 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 game a little bit. But at the same time, that new faction then, then over time, 10 years down the line, it then has its heritage. So if they then brought out a model 10 years later where it's like, oh, we're now going to do this for this faction. Same problem mm, again. Same problem again. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? So, so I think... In, it's inherently a problem of creating a law and narrative and it's kind of a rock and hard place you're damned if you do you're damned if you don't if you don't create a rich law and narrative the miniature is just a miniature and there's no emotional attachment to it whereas if you've read a story that determines that faction or that that character or that race or whatever like hmm. that's what you fall in like as much as as much as the models and the production and the quality of the kits and all that is is obviously what it is it's the law and narrative in my opinion that people fall in love with and that's what makes them you know, how many people have read a black library book and then go, I, I read about the Raptors chapter. I've got to paint some Raptors. Do you know, yeah. I've got to buy. So yeah. how many people like play, play, I know when Dawn of War came out, the computer game series, Dawn of War was an amazing opportunity. Uh, it created loads of people that got into 40K because they played the Dawn of War computer game, you know, video game. Okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so, so like, it's, it's like, it's, that for me is kind of the, actually the, this is why, it's a, sorry to go in a bit of a tangential conversation, but this is why it, GW protect the IP and narrative as strictly as they Storms do, they do yeah. because ultimately that is actually the product. Yeah, the miniatures mm. are amazing and they are what they are, and the but games they represent, are things, but they are they are representatives, as yeah. you said, of those things in the yeah. law and narrative. That so, story, yeah. so you, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to create a game that doesn't have that. That then, I, in my opinion, gets the gets the growth as other games. So you kind of mm. have to yeah. have that in place to then anchor people to it if you follow me you yeah know? so on, on that note then i'm curious what your thoughts are paul because you've said previously that you just buy miniatures for miniatures you're not like super invested yeah. in any particular army or faction so True. you're kind of not as married i just to don't care yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on the sort of 40k aos divide then because i guess you're someone who would just sort well, of pick I, up one of either I kind anyway of see, I, i've always loved 40k right that's that's the main thing that drew me in as a youngster to it the sci-fi element of you know this fantasy world you know space marines and fighting aliens and all that sort of stuff uh so i'll always be sort of that's always going to be there but i can't i kind of see aos as like a palette cleanser mm. almost yeah. it's uh you know you're painting space marines all the time as or whatever it is in 40k that you like to paint you're you know there's lots of there's always i i from my point of view is i'm painting space marines because that's what i enjoy painting for the most part for 40k so you paint straight lines quite often. There's armor panels. There's all this kind of stuff. If you paint something from AOS, that there, there's, I mean, obviously, unless you you know stormcast storm or whatever, yeah. but everything else has got flowing fabrics. There's there's it's all flowing lines. It's completely different to what you would normally paint, and it's it's kind of just recharging. Yeah, you to to then think oh, that was I really enjoyed painting that. But now I can go, you know, I fancy painting another Space Marine again and you sort of go back. So I, I, I really enjoy painting AOS stuff. I wouldn't necessarily make a conscious effort to collect it over 40K. But whenever something 
quite cool comes out for AOS. Yeah. Like, you know, my attention sort of swerves towards it and think, that's actually quite cool. I wouldn't mind having yeah. about painting that. I, I'm exactly the same. If you if I see a model that I absolutely love just mm. because of the model yeah, yeah. with Age of Sigma, I'll be like, I want to paint that. Yeah. Like, whereas with 40K, it's like, I want to find out all about it, find out what yeah. it is, find out that. Yeah. So I think that's just... But I, I'd also argue that even before Age of Sigma was around, when I'm a fantasy, in fantasy... That had a long, had the same amount of like background history, mm. like the world map, all that kind of stuff, and that's why people were were quite annoyed when it got blown up. And obviously, Age of Sigma came along. Even within that, I think if they brought out new models for factions and just started creating random stuff, I think you'd have the exact same kickback as you do in 40k. And that's still with dragons and knights yeah. and, and like magical scenario situations. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think it just needs more time to brew. And I think that the exact same issues. I say issues in speech marks, yeah, it's not yeah. issues, but like the same same conundrum will be prevalent in Age of Sigma 10, 15 years down the line because people will have completely concreted in what mm. their perce perception of X faction or X character or X thing is. Like imagine if, I don't know, that's that, this is this, this is him now as it is now. And in 10 years' time, they bring out a model where it's completely different. Yeah. Because people have. Well, take, if you take, for example, like the Vermin Lord yeah. models that have been brought out over the years, I mean, they're all vermin lords. They're just different variations, aren't they? Mm -hmm. You know, you still bring out a new, new vermin lord. Well, it's still a vermin lord, but it's posed differently or it looks a little bit different. So, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Whilst this is nice and shiny and new and it, it's a very cool miniature, you know, in 10 years' time, yeah, like you say, it's probably going to be the sort of same thing if they make another one or whatever. Um, but, yeah, for now... I think that's like you say, it's like it's kind of in its infancy still. It is. It's only nine, was it? Did you, I don't know if you It's 2015, it. yeah. 2015, so it's it, like nine it, years old. It's like in the grand scheme of things, it's not, a, that's yeah. not like, you compare Age of Sigma and it's not really just, not the they're bringing out some, like, especially for Skaven, it's not like just bringing out a few new miniatures for, for character models. It's a whole new army, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I, I don't know why either, mm. but I, can very easily get swept up with like a really cool new character that comes out. Yeah. But there's no real like army range that sucks me in in the same way, if that makes sense. Well, like, AOS. Yeah, on AOS yeah, yeah. specifically, there's no real range where I'm like, oh, I like a vast like majority of it, or like a an assortment of it, rather yeah. than just like one or two units or characters, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, like even with the with the new Skaven stuff that's coming out, I yeah. think it looks really really cool. It is cool. But when I look at like the army overall, yeah, I don't sit there and think, oh, I'd love to paint an army. No, that. I sit there and think, oh, that character's really cool, and I'd like to paint a couple of those clan rats, and then yeah, yeah. maybe this guy. Yeah, I think that's that's quite a good, good point as well. In the past, I never was never really attracted to sort of Warhammer old world that sort of thing when it all sort of first about because there was just so many miniatures on the table. Yeah. And it, compared to 40k, where you could have a few squads, I just, you know, I just didn't want to, I wasn't kind of interested in painting that many things. And then obviously back then as well, there was all sort of one mold of a figure anyway, weren't they? So you're painting the same model sort of a hundred times. Yeah. Which is, you know, which that's sort of draining in itself. But the odd character model here, every sort of here and there is, I think it's a real pla uh, palette cleanser. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's really Completely. good. Yeah, it's really good. I do, I do agree. Well, put, guess, your, put your blood angels away <laughs> and paint something else for once. Do, do you know the new Stormcast? It's the first time that I've looked at Age of Sigma and been like, I could. That's because yeah, they're, they're Space Marines. I could paint. Yeah, I know, but, it, but, <laughs> um, but it, I do think they're really good. They are. They are nice, they, I yeah, love the but, new armor. The armor's amazing. Um, very similar armor to some of the Blood Angel ones. You know, without the nips. Yeah. 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 Nip gate again. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. to conclude then, uh, we'll review in 10 years. Yeah, yeah. we'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get, needs, more, needs more time on the on the stove. Yeah. 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 Let's see if but, we were right. Yeah. <laughs> Might yeah. be. I, 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 yeah. They, they, I still think the models are amazing. Doesn't doesn't change the fact that the design quality of the models is is exceptional, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, we'll see obviously in some time when time passes. If you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you'll know how important it is to have the right tools to aid you in your painting. And if there's one piece of equipment that I could never live without, it's my Onyx lamp from Native Lighting. It doesn't matter what brush or paints you have if you can't see what you're doing in the first place. The Onyx is the perfect lamp for miniature painting because it's super bright, 2200 lumen LEDs cast soft and diffused light on your models without any harsh shadows. 
And its daylight balanced color temperature of 6500K gives you the confidence that the colors you are painting are accurate. As someone with a very small hobby desk, by far my favorite feature though is its articulating arm, which clamps to the side of your desk, maximizing your workspace. It's also super adjustable so you can sit comfortably in the perfect painting position without sacrifice. It also folds up into a compact shape, which is great if you like to travel to paint with your friends. To upgrade your setup and order yours now, head to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop or head to the link in this episode's description. Question of the week time. Thank you everyone for submitting your questions for question of the week. If you have a question you'd like us to answer on a future episode of the podcast, please do leave it in the comments down below on YouTube. Or if you'd like to join the Siege Studios Discord server, also link down below. Uh, you can submit your suggestions over there. Uh, this week, we have a question from Thomas Mavro Nicholas, who says, uh, been back in the hobby for six months, already built up the pile of potential with Leviathan Spearhead Forces, and now getting all of the new Blood Angels releases. I'd love to know how you guys manage your own piles of potential or stacks. Well, don't well you come to the right yeah. place. <laughs> don't, don't look at me. I, I, I tend to push mine deep down uh, inside. And, how's how's and yours looking, it? Paul, these days? It's getting worse and worse. Is it? Yeah, yeah definitely. Because I wouldn't have uh, imagined you as someone with a massive pile of potential. So uh, it's, it, We're all guilty. I, yeah. I, I think you always, always start off the hobbies like, well, I'm not going to let it get to the position where it was like last time where he had a huge... So, but it, it does, it just creeps up on you. Yeah. It, it really does. Um, I Most of my, the way I deal with it, right, it just goes in a brown box, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hidden in the corner, so I don't have to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I just, Can't I, do anything about it then, can it? What's it going to do to me? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I have a more constructive answer. Uh, <laughs> do you paint it? Do you actually paint it? No. Are you having a laugh? <laughs> <laughs> better, than, better than that. Uh, no, I would actually say, I'm. we are all guilty of this to an extent, even myself. I'm not saying I don't have unpainted stuff. I'm not mm -hmm. saying I don't have a few boxes. It's getting a little bit out of hand. worse now yeah, because spiraling. of the Blood Angel stuff. It's not spiraling. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> I've got a handful of, I've got a handful of kits. Yeah. Right. Where I'd say I knocked this on the head was unless it's like something that you just, it's so ancient, you know it's going out of production or something. Those models will be on Looking the shelf. Looking you, James. <laughs> those models will be in the sh on the shelf in time to come. You do not have to buy everything you intend on painting right now. So with my Space Marines Army, for example, I did buy the new Blood Angels Army box. But prior to that, mm -hmm. I literally bought three kits that I like. Even though in my head, I'm like, I want to do an army. I didn't go out and buy an army. Yeah. I went, right, these are some of the units that I would like to do first. Went and bought those. When I'm done painting them, then I can go out and buy some new stuff. So I'd say potentially where you've gone wrong with this, unfortunately, is uh, already buying stuff. Um, I know it's a bit harder with. It's like, too late for you. It's too late. <laughs> you can't. You can't be helped. It's too it late. Is, it is harder with the boxes, especially like the discount boxes and stuff, and they're yeah. limited and whatever. Like Leviathan, I totally get that. But I would say like, just try to stop yourself from like just buying stuff as, as it comes out and as it's released. Going like, oh, I'll paint that at some point. Yeah. It's like, well, when you've got the bandwidth to paint it, that's when you can go and pick it up. Yeah. Especially if it's new releases, because if it's just come out and it's like on pre-order this weekend, it's like, well, you know, mm. it will be. It's still on the shelf in a couple of years. Yeah. So follow the if you're advice it, that we give. Don't do what we do. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Do as I say, don't do as yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah, I am not the best person to no. answer this question because I not only have it with miniatures, but I have it with paint as well. So uh, yeah, we, it's not we know all about it's that. It's not it's not the best thing. There's a reason why mm -hmm. having a loft is a good thing. Um <laughs> For Christmas uh, decorations, Christmas right? decorations, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, or a garage, yeah, well, a loft or a garage, uh, um, or both in your or, case, or both, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so uh, no, but I, yeah, I think, um, I think, like with having a spring clean, you know, summer's coming or spring's coming, you know, I think an occasional cull, if we can use that word, hmm. I think isn't it, it so much easier to cull stuff as well if you know it's like still available? Uh, if you get what I yeah, mean, yeah, it is. I mean, you, like look, culling, vi cu culling like retro stuff that like you would have to resort to like eBay or Trollcade yeah, yeah. or whatever That's is obviously a, a harder decision to make. But if is. you've got like piles and piles of like newish stuff. It's like nothing special about it. I feel like it is quite easy to just, I think, okay, yeah. let's part with I, some I of this. I think the answer is if I can replace it tomorrow from multiple sources, then yeah, you haven't got to hold on to it. And and like the good thing I suppose like about Warhammer is that it does hold, when you buy it, it does retain a bit of its value. So like you, it's not like a car and you take it off the forecourt and it depreciates. Yeah, you typically like 30, get most of it back. Yeah. You typically get a good percentage back. Um, so there is that security in that sense, I suppose. But um, Especially but, if you don't like open it as well. If you're someone yeah. who's like buying a lot of stuff, I would say like 
if you know you're not going to be paying it for a while, probably leave it yeah. in the box. Yeah. Just so that, like, if you do, kind of got like a little uh, escape clause there, haven't you? Yeah. For reselling it. Yeah. I, I, I just, yeah, I'm, it's, I'm not the best person because I, I have quite bad, <laughs> quite a bad pile of potential. Um, yeah. But I just see it as an opportunity to go to your drawer, cupboard, garage, loft, next best friend's house, wherever you keep store it, and uh, lock up wherever, mm. wherever, at work, it is, wherever, wherever, yeah. wherever, wherever. My, my wherever issue is, is though, is like yeah. people always, people with big piles of potential mm. always say that, and they're always still buying new stuff. <laughs> It's like if that oh, were true, we're all guilty of that, George. It's, it's like, not if just that were me. true, yeah. if that were true, you're like, oh yeah, but I like having a, like a library of stuff that I can go back to. Mm. It's like, yeah, but why do you keep buying new stuff then? Because surely then you go, I've got nothing to paint. I've just finished my latest project. Let's consult the archives. It's always let's go on to GW's website and find the new shiny. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think that yeah that ultimately it just means that we're all super super passionate about miniatures and. I think there is a, an element of FOMO and a fear of missing out, but like... Mm. Well, I've spoken as well about like collecting. I think it's perfectly valid. Yeah. Like if your intent is to just collect stuff and you like having yeah, the stuff, there is, then there that's is, fine. There is that aspect. It depends on your well. like, uh, how you view it. Because if it's, if you view it as like an incomplete thing because you're like a painter and you want to like have loads of painted stuff, mm. then that's where the like shame around it comes. Yeah. Yeah. But if you like, if you just acknowledge like, yeah, I just like buying this stuff. This is my collection. Yeah. I think you know. you've just got to be, as you said, you've got to be honest with yourself. It's like, am I buying this to paint? Because you can quite easily, irrelevant of how big your pile of potential shame stack, whatever terminology you want to appropriate to it that makes you feel more happy about mm. the amount of stuff that you've got. The amount of money you've spent. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think, I think the thing is, is like, you can easily go and get a model and just pick it off the shelf and paint it the day you buy it if you really want to. Yeah. You know, but it's buying it and then going, oh, I will paint that. You know, not. <laughs> I'm buying it. I'm going home. I'm opening it. Yeah. I'm building it, and I'm starting to paint it. Like, I just like look at when you get on, you get home and you look at anything. I'm definitely going to paint this. I'll just put that in the cupboard, yeah. <laughs> and then you just forget about it. Yeah, that's so yeah, alien that's... to me though, because like if I buy a kit, I'm always like itching to start it. So like I couldn't yeah. imagine buying something without the intent of. Yeah. Well, the third thing it. you do is oh, I take the wrap off and have a look at the sprue, and then pop it back in the box. And or you go. do that and you open it. You see how many parts there are. Yeah, and like, you push you yeah, off, and you're like, oh god. Like I remember when I first saw the brand new. Plastic, uh, plastic contempt of dreadnought. Yeah, like the foot's made out of like five pieces. Each foot, I was like, <laughs> okay, that's a lot for a foot. Yeah, you know what I mean, like it's just yeah. So like, I don't know, but but yeah, I think um, you just got to be honest with yourself, and 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 ultimately, if you can replace it with a click of you know, like that, if you can get you replace it next day, like from multiple sources or stockists, then then do you really need to hold on to it? Like, can you get yeah. another one? I think now with the industry being the way that it is, and the amount of product that there is out there, and the amount of production that there is out there, albeit we have had a some problems with production over the last couple of years since the pandemic or whatever. But, but I think if, I, like I've said in other conversations and other episodes, if you really want the model, you can get hold of it. I guess more in the spirit of, uh, of the question though, uh, in terms of like actually managing the stuff you've got to paint, mm. I would say like narrow down on one specific thing, like come up with an objective rather than like butterflying, as you call it, James, or like scattering out across like multiple things yeah. shotgunning it yeah. just pick <laughs> a like, <laughs> like you said you've got some <laughs> some spearhead forces like just go okay for this month or next three months base it around however much time you have to paint yeah. and hobby just go okay I'm going to knuckle down and get this one thing done yeah. and maybe try and limit your purchasing alongside that so that yeah. the, the pile is actually going down not yeah. stagnating every or time going you feel up. like you need to paint uh, to buy something just build one of the models you've already got channel yeah. that energy into something else maybe. yeah I agree get, maybe get some or even if you're going to buy something, buy some spray cans so you can undercoat everything. Yeah. <laughs> or an airbrush, Paul. An, air yeah. an airbrush. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay, our final segment on the podcast is something that we like to call Hobby Hacks. This is our weekly tradition on the podcast where we share a little quick tip with you because we know a lot of you like to do the hobby while you're listening to the episodes. Uh, Joe shared a hobby hack on last week's episode to do with magnetizing. And that reminded me actually of a very cool community suggestion that we had in C Studios Discord. So there's one here from Saldra Herods. Hopefully I'm getting your name right. Uh, good evening. I might have a small hobby hack for you guys. Uh, super glue can be a tough thing to work with. Uh, most of us glue magnets with it under the bases, but the magnets are small and the risk of getting glue on either your hands or gloves is high. Uh, what I'm using to help with gluing magnets to the base is a big paper clip I stole from my place of work. I love that. I feel like that's quite mm. important. You've got yeah, to steal you it from an office. Pinch things from work. Yeah. Yeah. Extra value. Yeah. Extra value. Uh, Plus one. <laughs> uh, the magnets stick to it. And with the magnet and the end of the paper clip, I can easily put it into the super glue without any danger of the sticky substance coming near my hands. 
And once you put the magnet onto the super glue and wait a few seconds, the paper clip can easily be taken off. Uh, I hope this helps. So it's quite cool actually, because uh, I've always thought in my head, what I want to use for like sticking magnets to stuff is tweezers. But if they're metal, they stick to the tweezers. So it's like yeah. just a nightmare, like sitting there holding yeah. it, waiting for the glue to dry, then you stuck the tweezers to the mop, like it's a nightmare. So I always thought in my head, like, I wonder if we could get some like maybe non-magnetic tweezers or something. But this is actually genius because, because the paper clip can kind of prop itself up. So you can kind of like set up, set it up to dry, like on your desk and kind of like leave it because the paper clip's kind of holding itself up. Does that make sense? It's like a little stand. Sure. Yeah. You know, you've got like those little helping sure. hands. Yeah. Uh, like Unless you've clips. got a, a paperclip made of solid gold, does that that that's not magnetized? Not magnetized. So I think. No idea. That, that, that tip falls apart right there. No, yeah. well, no, because what hack. you're doing is because it's magnetic. Mm. So you're picking up the magnet. Know, with what the if you've clip. only got gold paperclips? <laughs> is that I a mean, big problem you have? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, that's. Uh, uh, I'll be, I'll be, if you've got gold paperclips, we have got to have a conversation. But uh, what do you think of this, James? Uh, I like it. I do a very similar thing with blue tack. So I just, I, Very similar I get, tack. I basically, clips. it doesn't know because a blue tack will stick to the magnet, but sure. once the glue has enough uh, purchase. tack purchase on the piece, the, the purchase on the piece is more than blue tack. Yeah, and I only, purchase. yeah, so I, I use blue tack for it, but it, mm. it works exactly the same. I've got to say though, in a slight segue, a little bit disappointed there's no bomb I'm on in the photo. I did it's notice. A, it's a Bridges, yeah. Bridges strawberry connoisseur, uh, preserve, not connoisseur, sorry. So I, I'm actually a bit gutted that there's no, uh, no bomb I'm on. But it, it, you, is, it is quite tiny as well though. Which yeah, is you quite fitting. Minus five points for Jam yeah. Jar, but plus, uh, plus well, 50 points. Just not their water pot to be fair though. That clearly looks like something that they're storing, storage, yeah. storing yeah. bits storage, in. So. Uh, well, breaking news uh, for everyone. I, I, I do now have my bomb 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 jar from James. Oh, it was nice. gifted. Yeah. It's gifted. It, he's finally, you know, he's given it to me. It does look like James it's been finally a, got for all of his toast. Yeah, <laughs> it does look like it's been in a house fire. It's, but, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah. Uh, oh, is this one. the one that spray painted black? Adam, yes. Adam decided to spray paint it black. That was not yeah. my fault. But you've still been provided with a bomb bomb uh, jar. If you'd like a new one, I can uh, uh, give me a couple of weeks. I'll get you another one. Uh, well, <laughs> no need because I, I suddenly realised that I've actually got a jar in my fridge with some like I've done this, you know, secret bomb bomb. Yeah, I've, so, had, I I've, had, I've had bomb bomb in my fridge all yeah. this time, and like it just it's got a kind of cool little in plain sight, red and white picnicy lid on yeah. the top. I didn't even didn't even know. Brilliant, cool. <laughs> <laughs> jam talk. Yeah. Uh, anyway, well, thank you for the hobby hack. Uh, if you want to share your hobby hacks with us, then leave them in the comments. Uh, maybe we'll pick some more in future. Because uh, I'll admit, getting a bit dry yeah. <laughs> after sixty-seven episodes, but. Uh, no, we'll, th we'll think of more. I've got a good one for next week, I think. There's always a hack to be had. Isn't there is always a hack yeah. to be had. As yeah. as we hobby, we think of new ones. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. The ultimate hack is if you've got loads of um, a big pile of potential, we just get someone else to deal with it. That's yeah. a hack. That's a hack. There you go. Yeah. That's, why it's, that's why Siege exists, I suppose. Siege <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Studio. Ultimate hack. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, a massive thank you for tuning in for this week's episode of Paint Perspective. We're going to switch over now to the Patreon bonus version of the podcast. So if you're not aware... Uh, for our patrons, we do a little post show at the end of these, so you get an additional 20 to 30 minutes of paint perspective content in your life, because we all know you need more of that. Uh, and in addition to that, you'll of course get access to all of the tutorials and a load of other benefits like ad-free episodes and whatnot. So check the link in the description of this video if you'd like to see that uh, for this episode and for past episodes as well. Uh, otherwise, we will see you next week. It feels like it's like on its knees, doesn't well, it? Well, I think, hence the new miniatures. What the f*** are you talking about? <laughs> 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 this one time? I mean, let's, hang on, it. let's work this out. Let's try this again. <laughs>